until the T minus 31 second point. All the console operators here in the launch control center can ask that the count be held if there's a problem detected on the systems they're monitoring. Copy. And Houston Flight NTD perform BFS pre flight uplink loading. Houston Flight copies will put it in work. However, currently there are no technical issues that are being worked. And things are on track from a hardware point of view to launch on time at 4.14 a.m. Eastern Time. The only concern that we are working is the same concern as yesterday morning that prevented launch. The potential of a cloud ceiling to uh, be over the Kennedy Space Center around launch time. ACD and MCP adjust fuel cell loads to between 250 and 290 amps. EPD copies and work. MCP copies. Forecasters were hoping for a gap in this cloud, uh, the clouds that are coming in from the from the east over the Atlantic Ocean towards the Kennedy Space Center, hoping for that gap to open up around launch time. There, hopefully we'll see signs of that. Astronaut Chris Ferguson is flying a shuttle training aircraft. Providing real-time weather data back of the conditions he's seeing. We're at T-minus 13 minutes and counting. The T-minus 9-minute hold is about a 40-minute hold. When the launch team makes the final adjustments to uh, if any are needed put us at the, uh, the exact launch time. Right now the smack dab middle of our, our uh, launch time is... PLT, we are complete with horizontal fit config and config contingency aboard Yas Deer. Copy that, and I'll give you go to perform MPS helium reconfig for your checklist. PLT, MPS helium reconfig and work. Right now, our preferred in-plane time in the middle of the 10-minute uh, window that we have is at 4.14 and 8 seconds. NTD Houston Flight 212, I can give you 16.1052, BFS pre-flight on point load is complete. Copy. CVFS, you copy? Copy. OTC, PLT, MPS, helium reconfig is complete. Copy that, thank you. And MPS, can you verify 1056? That's verified. Thank you. Countdown clock will hold at T-minus nine minutes in two minutes. Yes, sir. NASA Test Director Jeff Spaulding giving us the, uh, the launch team will be holding at the T-minus nine minute mark. During the all personnel discontinue all non mandatory LVD traffic for the remainder count. It's a call from the orbiter test conductor, Roberta Wyrick, that uh, only essential communication on the lines she's referring to. We are one minute away from our final built in hold in the countdown. Yeah, LO is uh, now 
green. Therefore, range status now go. Copy, range status green. And we're still green here. Copy. And we're coming up with a T-minus nine-minute hold in five, four, three, two, one. We are at T-minus nine minutes in holding. T-minus nine minutes in holding. Duration of hold will be 45 minutes, seven seconds. As you heard, 45 minutes and seven seconds, the total time in the hold. To get us to a launch time at four. 14 a.m. Oh. Everything does remain on track for launching on time this morning. When the countdown is resumed, the ground launch sequencer will be in control of all the critical operations. This uh, master computer program will issue all the commands necessary to perform the final, yeah. final critical tasks required to put the shuttle in the final launch configuration. Copy and OTC, I'll give you 1085. The ground launch sequencer monitors about a thousand different Copy. shuttle Copy. functions during the last nine minutes of the count. Make sure they stay within the within the limits. Once Endeavour does list lift off from uh, launch pad 39A, command and control of the STS-130 mission does switch over to the mission control center at uh, NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. And at this time, we'll go there for an update from the Ascent commentator, Kylie Clem. Kylie? Thanks, Allard, and good morning, and welcome to Mission Control Houston at T-minus nine minutes and holding. Here at the Johnson Space Center, the Ascent flight control team has been on console in the space shuttle flight control room since 9 p.m. Central Time. The team is led by Flight Director Norm Knight. He's overseeing his sixth and final Ascent. After this flight, he will be first overseeing Endeavour's entry uh, and landing after the conclusion of the mission, and then he will move on to serve as the Deputy Chief of the Flight Director Office. Here, astronaut Rick Sterko is serving as the CAPCOM, or spacecraft communicator, and will make calls to Endeavour's crew during the climb to orbit. The team here, along with the team at Kennedy Space Center, is again monitoring systems on the space shuttle. They're not discussing any technical issues that would affect launch at this time and the teams are monitoring the weather forecast for today's launch as well. The team uh, here at Johnson Space Center is led by Weather Flight Director Brian Lenny and Weather Capcom astronaut Steve Frick. They're working with the Space Flight Meteorology Group to assess the observations and conditions at emergency landing sites. First that at the launch site in the event of an emergency return to the shuttle landing facility and also the contingency runways in Spain and France. They are discussing the clouds again at the shuttle landing facility, as was the case uh, last night, and also the weather at the, the uh, trans-oceanic abort landing sites. Two are in uh, discussion now with the primary one the team is targeting is Zaragoza, Spain, that uh, has some showers in the area that the team is monitoring closely, and uh, the other landing site Istres France that has been discussed has some cloud ceilings in the area that is uh, forecast no-go and uh, Marone, Spain, the third option is uh, experiencing some rain in the area so not in consideration. Down the hallway in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, Flight Director Courtney McMillan is overseeing operations. The five international crew members of Expedition 22 Commander Jeff Williams and Flight Engineers Maxime Surayev, Oleg Kotov, TJ Kramer, and Suichi Noguchi are in the afternoon of their day on board the station. Mission Control has been sending out video of the launch preparations for the crew members to look at throughout the day, and they should be able to watch the launch live. The station crew members have been getting ready for this joint mission, preparing items for return to Earth aboard Endeavour, getting the airlock and equipment ready for the spacewalks, 
and reviewing those procedures. This work has been in addition to their regular support of research on board from scientists around the world, as well as maintaining station systems. At the time of launch, the International Space Station will be about 220 miles above Western Romania, near the Hungarian-Yugoslavian border. Throughout Endeavour's ascent, Capcom Rick Sterko will provide the crew with the status of the space shuttle's capability to reach those contingency landing sites and eventually orbit as Endeavour gains speed and altitude. The first calls between Houston and the crew should be once Endeavour clears the launch tower, and that will be about the onboard guidance and navigation control system maneuvering the shuttle to a heads-down position, putting it on a precise course and its trajectory towards space. About 30 seconds into the flight, Endeavour's three main engines will be throttled down to protect the vehicle as it passes through the area, area of maximum atmospheric pressure. The engines then will operate at about 240,000 pounds of thrust for a few seconds and then throttle back up to provide over 396,000 pounds of thrust. At two minutes and five seconds into the flight, the solid rocket boosters will burn out and separate from the vehicle, at which point Endeavour will be traveling over 3,600 miles an hour. Endeavour will continue toward orbit in its target speed of 17,500 miles per hour, at which point the engines will be turned off and the external fuel tank will separate. At main engine cutoff, eight and a half minutes into the flight, Endeavour will be in a 136 by 36 statute mile orbit, and then about 30 minutes later, the orbit will be adjusted using the orbital maneuvering system engines to 142 by 127 statute miles. All continues to go well. Here in the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room as the team continues to discuss the weather at the emergency or contingency landing sites. The team is ready to take over the flight of the Endeavour with the launch and the STS-130 mission at solid rocket booster ignition. Now we'll go back to Kennedy Space Center in Allard Butel at T minus nine minutes in holding. This is Mission Control Houston. Thank you, Kylie. And we are back here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center along Florida's Central East Coast in firing room number four of the Launch Control Center. Six, 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 As you just heard, uh, okay, launch now. controllers are not working any technical issues. OTC. And at the moment, we are currently green across the board for weather. The big question is, will it remain green and up to our uh, targeted launch time at 4.14 a.m.? Thank you. Shuttle weather officer Kathy Winters said it looks promising. So currently we are we are green for weather, and uh, with any luck we'll remain green for the remainder of this count and uh, be able, unlike yesterday morning, be able to get Endeavour and the STS-130 mission safely underway. with 37 minutes and 35 seconds remaining in this final built-in hold. At T minus nine minutes in holding, this is shuttle launch control.
This is shuttle launch control at T-minus nine minutes in holding. We have 30 minutes remaining in this final built-in hold in the countdown for Space Shuttle Endeavor's STS-130 mission to the International Space Station. The launch team continues to not work any issues that would prevent us from launching on time at 4.14 a.m. Eastern. And currently the weather is forecast and observed green. Go SRO. Range is go for countdown resumption and T0. Range status is go for launch. What's your status for the new T0? Our status is green and we are go. Copy. Hearing that the... Uh, there's several polls that normally take place uh, during this final hold. To confirm that all team members and all various parts of the team are, are good to go with proceeding with launch. NASA's test director, Jeff Spaulding, will uh, poll all the engineers in firing room number four here. And uh, the chair of the mission management team for pre-launch, Mike Moses, who's also the space shuttle launch integration manager, he will poll the members of the uh, MMT. Again, launch controllers are not working any technical issues, and the forecast is currently green. Say that the mood inside the launch control center is cautiously optimistic about uh, getting a break in the weather this morning. Definitely in a better outlook than we had yesterday morning, which eventually led to a scrub because of a cloud ceiling. So at 27 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this final built-in hold, at T-minus 9 minutes in holding, this is shuttle launch control. And for our personnel, we have 27 minutes remaining of hold time in our hold here at T-minus 9 minutes, tracking no issues at this time.
And go ahead. Endeavor Houston with updates to your uh, TAL site. Houston Endeavor, go ahead, CJ, ready to copy. Sambo, we're going to update your TAL site to uh, Zaragoza. It has the better conditions. So on spec 50, we'll take an item 40 plus 4 to select Zaragoza. On spec 50, we'll give you an item 40 plus 4. Good read back. This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes in holding. We have 22 minutes and 35 seconds remaining in this final built-in hold. Yes, Endeavor, that's complete. Copy. You just heard Rick Sturkow, the Capcom and Mission Control Center in Houston, letting Endeavor's commander, George Zamka, know that they are changed their prime transatlantic abort site location to uh, Zaragoza, Spain. We have three, three over uh, TAL sites, as they're known. Two in Spain and one in France. Uh, over the course of this evening, based on weather conditions, uh, has moved around a bit. Settling on now, uh, Zaragoza is the prime TAL site, if needed. The unlikely event that uh, Endeavour was not able to make it into orbit and has to exercise that emergency option. For launch conditions, uh, our launch commit criteria, our, our launch rules, only one of three TAL sites need to be uh, available for us. So in this case, we have Zaragoza, and that keeps us on track to launch on time this morning in roughly about half an hour. Launch controllers are not currently working any issues that would prevent us from launching on time at 4.14 a.m. Eastern. And we have 21 minutes remaining in this built-in hold. At T minus nine minutes in holding, this is shuttle launch control.
CC, CHZ. Yeah, I can give you step 1143. 1143, copy. This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes in holding. We have 15 minutes remaining in this. 15 minutes of hold time remaining here at T minus nine minutes. As you just heard, no issues at this time. NASA test director Jeff Spalding say, You're looking at the orbiter access arm, the gantry way that allows crews to get in and out of the shuttle at the 195 foot level of the launch pad. You also heard Jeff Spalding say that uh, not working any issues. And that's why you're not getting a lot of uh, voice communication you're hearing is because it's uh, pretty quiet. They're not really working any issues at all. And uh, keeping their optimism up that the weather will hold as well. Because we were in the same situation uh, yesterday morning with no technical issues being worked. However, the weather did not cooperate. This morning, it seems like we may get a, a break in that weather and uh, the cloud ceiling will hold off and at least long enough to safely get Endeavour underway and start the STS-130 mission to the International Space Station. TLT, OTC. Clear hardware, caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. That's it, Mark. And that's Endeavour's Commander George Zamka talking to. Go ahead, PVD. Uh, payload bay, purge, flow rate, step to launch, step 1127. And step 1124 was not performed. Copy that, thank you. Orbiter test conductor, Roberta Weirich. Right now, Endeavour is six astronauts. George Zamka, pilot Terry Verts, and Mission Specialist K. Hire, Nicholas Patrick, uh, Steve Robinson, and Bob Bankin are all uh, in the crew cabin and performing their final checks before liftoff. Again, not working any technical issues. with 12 minutes remaining in this final built-in hold. Launch remains on track for uh, liftoff at 4.14 a.m. Eastern. At T minus nine minutes in holding, this is shuttle launch control. Good, ISO. Copy one four five.
MS-1 and MS-4 OTC, activate D-10 recorder. MS-1, it works. Lipdeck D-10, it works. This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus 9 minutes in holding. We have 7 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this built-in hold. Joining me now is... Uh, the Assistant Launch Director for the STS-130 mission, Pete Nikolenko. Pete, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes to talk to us. It's quiet. Well, that's a good thing, <laughs> Allard. Uh, the vehicle has just been really clean, and uh, we've enjoyed uh, a very exceptionally uh, smooth launch countdown technical. From a technical perspective, uh, certainly we've been working and talking the weather, and as uh, circumstances hold out well for us, uh, the weather has cleared sufficient such that uh, we're good here at uh, KSC, and then all of the... Uh, uh, other landing site support locations are also good. So we got to go weather forecast, go observe conditions, and uh, go technically. So we expect a good clean pole and uh, should be ready to launch here shortly. You cautiously optimistic? Oh, no, I think we're very optimistic. Ooh, I like that even better. All right, well, I'm going to let you get back to your job because uh, you got to do that. We'll be trying to get out of this hold in six minutes and 45 seconds. Pete, thank you for joining us. No problem. And again, uh, as you heard, no technical issues. Puts us on track to launch at 4, 14 a.m. Eastern Time. CISL, JRPS, and Houston Flight perform the L-15 recorder activation. ISL, ISL, JRPS. JRPS copies. And Houston Flight. Houston Flight copies. We'll put it in work. Call to verify that the flight recorders will be activated on board Endeavour. So with six minutes and ten seconds remaining in this hold, T minus nine minutes in holding, this is shuttle launch control. And attention all personnel, this is the NTD conducting the launch status check. Verify ready to resume count and go for launch. OTC? OTC's go. TBC? TBC's go. PTC? PTC's go. LPS? LPS is go. Houston flight? Houston flight is go. Mila? Mila's go. STM? STM is go. Safety console? Safety console is go. SPE? SPE is go. LRD? LRD is go. SRO? SRO is go. And CDR. CDR is go. And launch director NTD, our launch team is ready to proceed at this time. Okay, I copy that, Jeff. Thanks. I'll do my poll at this time. KSC Chief Processing Engineer, verify no constraints to launch. No constraints. Thank you, Steve. Payload Launch Manager. Bike to Space Station teams go. Good. Thank you, Bill. KSC Safety and Mission Assurance. KSC Safety and Mission Assurance is go, Mike. Okay, Thank you, Mark. Mark. Range weather. Weather has no constraints to launch. Thank you, Kathy. And Ops Manager. Let's see, Mike. Uh, looks like we have acceptable weather conditions uh, around the world tonight for what we need. Mission management team doesn't have any other issues on the plate, so uh, you are go to launch Endeavour in no three. Okay. Thank you, sir. Endeavour Launch Director, air to ground one. Launch Director, this is Endeavour. Go ahead, sir. Okay, Zambo. Looks like the weather came together tonight. The vehicle's in great shape, so it's time to go fly. Wish you good luck, Godspeed, and we'll see you back here in about two weeks. Yeah, thanks, Mike, and thanks to the great team that got Tranquility, Cupola, and Endeavor to this point. And thanks also to the team that got us ready to bring No. 3 and Cupola to life. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. It's time to go fly. I'll do that. Have a great ride. And to you with that, you are clear to launch Endeavor. Copy that. Thank you. And as you heard, we, uh, personnel, we have three minutes, 20 seconds of hold time remaining here at nine minutes. We've been given the go to launch Endeavour to start the STS-130 mission on time at 4.14 a.m. Eastern. It's a 13-day mission to bring the Tranquility Node 
to the International Space Station and attach it. Controller. Bring the station to about 90% complete in terms of uh, weight, or in case mass, has to do with being in space. So the launch team got a break this time instead of what happened yesterday. Uh, had no hardware issues yesterday or today, and weather did not cooperate yesterday with clouds, but uh, this morning they stayed offshore and away from the Kennedy Space Center, enough to allow a launch attempt uh, this morning. Coming up in about uh, 12 minutes from now. Countdown clock will resume in two minutes. NASA Test Director Jeff Spaulding. Ninety seconds from coming out of this final built-in hold. Thirty seconds remaining in this final hold. The countdown, the count clock countdown clock will resume in five, four, three, two, two one. one. T minus nine minutes and counting. DLS auto sequence has been initiated. Confirmation that the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. It means all countdown functions are now automatically controlled by this GLS computer that's located in here in the firing room. At the T-minus 31 second point, the ground launch sequencer issues a command to the five onboard general purpose computers. The redundant set launch sequencer or RSLS software. Right, T-minus eight minutes and five seconds of counting. Pilot Terry Verts is now setting switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three onboard fuel cells to the essential power buses in Endeavour. Three fuel cells provide all the electricity for the shuttle while it's in orbit. T minus Seven minutes, 30 seconds and counting. DLS is go for orbiter access arm recheck. Endeavor OTC, let's start out the year with the delivery and installation of tranquility and the installation of the cupola, providing a breathtaking view of the Earth and giving you windows to the world. You see the orbiter access arm being moved away from the 
hatch of Endeavor. It's the walkway that the crew uses to get in and out of the shuttle, and it can be returned into position within a few seconds if necessary. We're at T-minus six minutes. 30 seconds and counting. Play recorder started. TLT OTC perform APU pre start. TLT and work. Terry Burks is giving the go ahead, been given the go ahead to start the auxiliary power units. And the APUs provide pressure to the shuttle's three hydraulic systems, which uh, move the main engine nozzles and the aero surfaces on the shuttle. T minus five minutes. 55 seconds and counting. OTC, PLT, APU restart complete, three great talkbacks. Copy that, thank you. We're fine that the APUs are up. We're at T minus five minutes and 30 seconds and counting. T minus five minutes and counting. TLC is go for orbiter APU start. TLC OTC perform APU start. CDR, recon CDR reconfigure heater. Terry Verse has been given the go ahead to start the auxiliary power units. The launch team has now terminated the liquid oxygen replenished to the external tank and is now initiating the liquid oxygen drain back from the piping at the bottom of the shuttle. T-minus four minutes, 30 seconds and counting. OTC, PLP, APU start is complete, three gray. Copy, three gray. Verifying that all three auxiliary power units are functioning well. Copy. T-minus four minutes and counting. Let's go for purge sequence four. The final helium purge of the three main engines is now underway. Preparation for main engine start. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds and counting. See the final aero service checks are being complete and Endeavour's three main engines are being moved through a pre-programmed series of maneuvers. It's the final test before launch. Prove that they are will do the steering that they need to get Endeavour into orbit. T minus three minutes and counting. TLS is go for EP LO2 pressurization. We're going to go to bring the final pressurization of the external tanks, liquid yeah. oxygen. OTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. PLT at work. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. See the gaseous oxygen vent hood, or it's also known as the beanie cap, is being slowly OTC retracted away from the top of the external tank. No unexpected errors. Copy that. Thank you. Caution and warning system has been cleared. Flight no issues there. Please close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. Endeavour has visors and O2 flow and work. Copy. 
We're at T-minus two minutes and counting. Let's just go for ET, LH2, pressurization. The liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is now being stopped. And we are 90 seconds away from the launch of Space Shuttle Endeavour. T-minus one minute and counting. T-minus 50 seconds. We're now transferring the shuttle's internal electricity. Endeavour is now being powered by its three onboard fuel cells. We're coming up on auto sequence start. T-minus 31 seconds and counting. Yeah. Endeavour's five main onboard computers now have primary control of all the spacecraft's critical functions, including control of the countdown from here on out. T-minus 16 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated. We're T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We have to go for ready to start. 2, one, zero, booster ignition, and liftoff of Shuttle Endeavour with NASA's final space station crew compartment that brings a bay window view to our celestial backyard. flight to the International Space Station. 28 seconds into the flight, Endeavour flying at 1,100 miles per hour, 1.3 miles in altitude, and 7 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, according to onboard computers. Endeavour's engines are throttling down at the, as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum pressure on the vehicle. Endeavour, go at throttle up. Endeavour copies, go at throttle up. The three main engines on board are throttling back up. Now one minute, ten seconds in the flight. Endeavour flying at 1,800 miles per hour, 10 miles in altitude, 11 and a half miles downrange. At liftoff, the fully fueled shuttle, boosters, and external tank weighed four and a half million pounds. The total thrust at launch was six million four hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. All systems continue to function well. Three good main engines, three good power generating fuel cells, and three good auxiliary power units for the hydraulic system. The next step will be the burnout and separation of the solid rocket boosters. Combined, the twin boosters provide 5.3 million pounds of thrust to propel the orbiter toward space. Endeavour performance is as expected thus far. Two minutes, 19 seconds into the flight, Endeavour flying at 3,700 miles per hour, 35 miles in altitude, and 49 miles downrange. The propulsion officer confirms that the orbital maneuvering system engines are firing, providing Endeavour with an extra boost to orbit. Endeavour, two engines, Zaragoza. Now 
until three minutes and four seconds into the flight. That call indicating an Endeavour could reach Zaragoza in the event of a single engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to operate well. Endeavour's computer is showing it flying at 4,600 miles per hour, 50 miles in altitude, and 98 miles downrange. Endeavour, negative return. Copy, negative return. Four minutes and three seconds into the flight, Endeavour is now flying too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the shuttle landing facility in the event of an engine failure. Endeavour is flying at 6,000 miles per hour, 63 miles in altitude, and 180 miles downrange. Endeavour continu continuing on track. Endeavour, you are pressed to ATO. Copy, press to ATO. Five minutes and 18 seconds into the flight. That call indicating Endeavour can now reach a lower than planned but a safe orbit on two engines should one fail, but all three engines are still performing well, as are the auxiliary power units and fuel cells. Endeavour, single engine, ops three. Endeavour, copy, single engine, ops three. Five minutes, 50 seconds into the flight, Endeavour could conduct a transatlantic abort landing on one engine should two fail at this point. Endeavour, single engine, Zaragoza. Copy, single engine, Zaragoza. Endeavour could reach Zaragoza on one engine should two fail at this point. Endeavour, you are pressed to Miko. Copy, press to Miko. Six minutes, 22 seconds into the flight, Endeavour can reach the planned orbit on two engines. All three engines continue to operate well. Endeavour Houston, your shutdown plan is nominal. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch maneuver. Nominal shutdown, go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Endeavour flying at 12,000 miles per hour now. Endeavour single engine press. Copy, single engine press. Seven minutes, eight seconds into the flight, Endeavour can reach its planned orbit on one engine should two fail. However, all three still performing well. Endeavour is now at an altitude of 64 statute miles, 606 miles downrange. The three main engines are now throttling down to maintain structural limits on the orbiter as it passes or approaches loads near three times gravity. Seven minutes, 40 seconds into the flight.
Eight minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. Endeavour continuing on track, all systems performing well. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. Endeavour Houston, nominal Miko, ohms one not required. Copy, nominal Miko, ohms one not required. And the external tank has separated now. Nine minutes into the flight of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on STS-130, the crew will be preparing for handheld photography of that external tank with a plus X maneuver of the orbiter to position Endeavour correctly. Mission Specialists Bob Bankin and Kay Heyer are quickly getting ready to capture that imagery. We're now here in Mission Control Houston at the Johnson Space Center watching the live coverage of the STS-130 mission, Endeavour now in orbit with its crew. And the team here will be working with the crew members to set up for the on-orbit operations to get Endeavour ready for its rendezvous with the International Space Station. Endeavour's uh, crew members, including Commander George Zampka, Pilot Terry Burtz, and Mission Specialist Kay Heyer and Steve Robinson on the flight deck, Nicholas Patrick and Bob Benkin on the mid-deck.
This is Mission Control Houston, the Space Shuttle Endeavour now in orbit at an altitude of 85 statute miles over the Atlantic Ocean. The team here in Mission Control getting set up to help the crew through the procedures to configure the Space Shuttle Orbiter's systems for its operations in orbit. Houston Endeavour, here comes the MPS DVCS of the shut. We copy, uh, Terry, Max is watching you. Copy that, CJ. Wish you could be here. We're seeing a beautiful sunrise with the moon and uh, some ice flying by. Copy that. Uh, great show, Endeavor. Endeavor Houston, you are go for APU hydraulic shutdown. Zambo, when you're ready, I've got your uh, deltas on page 3-4. Copy that, go for the uh, hydraulic shutdown uh, with the APUs, and I'm ready on 3-4 for deltas. Okay, Zambo, uh, tail only control is not required. There are no other deltas as you work through those procedures and we'll be ready for 105 at the bottom when you get there. Okay, copy. Tail only control, not required. The rest as written, and you'll be ready for 105. That's a good copy, Endeavor. Your preliminary OMS-2 TIG is 3730. That's 37 colon uh, 30, and you're going to burn the onboard targets. Copy, burn the onboard at 37 colon 30. Good copy. Astronaut Rick Sterko will continue to relay information to the crew on board the Spatial Endeavor from the team here in Mission Control. Endeavor's crew setting up for shutting down the auxiliary power units on board. The three APUs, as they're called, are hydrazine-fueled, turbine-driven power units that produce the pressure for the vehicle's hydraulic systems that uh, was needed during the Ascent to orbit. And another uh, event coming up for Endeavour will be the ignition of the orbital maneuvering system engines again in about 20 minutes to use those to adjust Endeavour's orbit. Endeavor Houston, we will be unable to speak to you for about a minute due to spreading. Endeavor copies. Endeavour's crew will continue through procedures as the communication system is configured. Endeavour's initial orbit uh, was that of 136 by 36 statute miles, and after this next ignition of the orbital and maneuvering system engines, the orbit will be 142 by 127 statute miles.
Coming up next here on NASA Television, we will have replays from the Kennedy Space Center of the launch of the Space Shuttle Endeavor for the STS-130 mission. The audio from the mission operations will continue on mission audio as we watch these replays here on NASA Television. Endeavor. Houston Endeavor, Block 2 is complete. Copy, Block 2 complete, Endeavor.
Endeavor Houston. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the onboard TIG, uh, Zambo of 37 colon 42. Okay, copy. We'll work the uh, onboard 3742. Endeavor. Here comes page three dash six as written. Copy, uh, Terry. Booster's uh, watching you, and we'll wait for twenty five minutes for that last step. Copy. And we see you there now. Thanks a lot, Terry. Houston Endeavor, looking ahead a little, uh, would it be all right for us to maneuver to the attitude for the burn? Endeavor, we're ready for the uh, maneuver. Copy, here it comes. Come the door, Houston. Copy, uh, Terry Max is watching you. This is Mission Control Houston continuing to watch replays of the launch of the Space Shuttle Endeavor on NASA television as we monitor the operations that are ongoing now on board the uh, Space Shuttle. The crew members working through the procedures to set up Endeavour for its on-orbit phase of operations. Pilot Terry Vertz uh, working through the procedure to close the umbilical door on the belly of Endeavour where the external tank was connected. 
He's already completed the power down of the main propulsion system for the three main engines. And Commander George Samka is setting up Endeavour in the correct position or attitude for the use of the orbital maneuvering system engines to change Endeavour's orbit as uh, planned, with that occurring in about seven and a half minutes. Now about uh, five and a half minutes away from Endeavour's orbital maneuvering system engines being used to adjust its orbit, uh, the, the spatial orbit. The next event on NASA television will be a post-launch news conference that's expected in about 45 minutes with managers gathering at the Kennedy Space Center for that uh, briefing on NASA television. That expected at uh, 4.30 a.m. Central, 5.30 a.m. Eastern. Houston Endeavor, com check from the handheld mic. Endeavor Houston, we got you loud and clear on the handheld mic, okay?
Endeavor Houston, we see a good config for the ohms to burn, and we expect to have good calm here on TDRC. Copy. Good config for the burn and good calm. Now about a minute and a half away from that burn using the orbital maneuvering system engines to adjust Endeavour's orbit. It will last about a minute and a half, uh, one minute and 33 seconds as planned, and will be a maneuver of 142 feet per second. That maneuver adjusts Endeavour's orbit to a more circulized orbit after Endeavour uh, reached its initial orbit from uh, launching from the Kennedy Space Center. The propulsion officer here in Mission Control shows, has information in his console uh, indicating that the engines are burning for that adjustment of Endeavour's orbit. Good burn, Endeavor. Endeavor copies. Good burn. Endeavor's engines, the orbital maneuvering system engines, have completed the adjustment of Endeavor's orbit, the orbital maneuvering system 2, or OMS 2 burn. That uh, when is expected, the guidance officer confirms Endeavor that the orbit Endeavor. is good. Take the OMS TBC gimbals check as written. Uh, no deltas to the post burn reconfig, and we'll be ready for 106 when you get there. Okay, Houston Endeavor copies uh, gimbal check uh, and 5 2 as written, and you'll be ready for 106. Is that correct? That's correct, and uh, call us back prior to block one. We'll have some uh, words for you. Copy. We'll call you prior to block one.
Captain Endeavour, we're putting Block 5 in work. Copy, Block 5 in work. In Houston and Never Homes, RCS post burn reconfig is complete, page uh, 5 2. We concur, Endeavor looks good. Thanks a lot. You bet, CJ. Okay, in Houston, here comes 106. Roger.